Blomfist. I watched it three times within 24 hours. <laughs> Brilliant. And my favourite part is where you hit your skates up and jump in the ring and you're ready to go. Oh, do you mean where the Nicker Monster comes out? Yeah. Brilliant film. See me draws. Yeah. Well, that was filmed in, you know where the Hippodrome used to be on West Derby Road? Yeah. That was filmed in there and they had an underground zoo there a hundred years before. That's where we actually filmed that scene. So it's made to look like we're in America. There's everyone you're looking at who was in that scene, all the people who were in the crowd, they're all scousers. <laughs> You've got Elaine Clark sitting there. Yeah. She's eating chocolates like that and watching what's going on and getting really excited at the fight. Well, she's been made Business Woman of the Year three times at Liverpool. Really? Yeah. So everyone who's in there, in that shot, there's loads of well-known scousers all in there playing a little scene. I actually thought it was shot in America. Part of it That's was. That's how good it was. And what about that uh, actress, Klondike? Klondike Kate? Yeah. Oh, Mark, she was amazing. Was Klon she? Yeah, Klondike Kate is a wrestler. She teaches wrestling now. So she was the big woman, wasn't she? Yeah, she. Well, poor Clonda kid, she got pregnant and had the baby in the ring. And she didn't know what knew she was pregnant. Really? <laughs> That's real life, yeah. Yeah, because she was that big, she didn't know that she was pregnant. And she's had this big wrestling match and give birth in the dressing room, actually. But she came to play um, Big Alice. And, uh, yeah. you know, she stand on there, the, the looks that she gave. She's such a strong player because she's got physical presence. And then um, I just love that scene where she, she comes in and she looks at my sister, Andrew, and she's... <laughs> <laughs> There's some great lines and... Yeah, really and when that. you went shopping with the American woman. And I go on the rob and yeah. rob, rob the diamonds. Well, the American woman, that's Carol Baker. Carol, you've mentioned her before, Carol Baker. But she was in a film with James Dean. Yeah. So you're talking about Hollywood royalty. And so unaffected by it, really down to earth. She was telling me about how badly she'd been ripped off. She got ripped off that bad by all kinds of managers. She ended up in Spain making spaghetti westerns. <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't say spaghetti, well, I mean, spaghetti myself. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Now, Carol, she was getting on when she did Blonde Fist, and it was amazing that she agreed to come over and yeah. play. She came to Kirby, came the the J and A bingo with us. Couldn't get over the atmosphere in the bingo, and you know it was just full of women. Yeah. So she was up for it, and then in the you know the storyline of Blonde Fist, it's an amazing story. What? She she thinks her father is the king of New York, but he's not. He's just a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? what? Even when you went to visit your dad, he was living living off. He didn't have a penny. And you had your little boy with you. I just thought the whole film was fantastic. And the source of the film, it's in Kirby. Mm -hmm. And your mum gives birth to you in Kirby Market. In Kirby Market on Bobby Schwartz Stall. Yeah. So my sister actually plays my mother in it. That's all right. I mean. Never acted before. Yeah. Never acted since. That was. <laughs> Her one and only acting debut, and she's fab. And in the storyline, she's at the market, she's nine months pregnant. Yeah. And there's a big crowd around Bobby Schwartz all because he's selling the plates. You know, he's a real hawker. And then um, she goes into, starts going into her birth, into mm -hmm. having the baby. So she ends up giving birth on a big bag of budgie, budgie millers, isn't it? Yeah. Mark? Budgie, it was budgie, it wasn't budgie seeds, it's what you put in the of the budgie cage in. Yeah. <laughs> so she gives birth on that, but while she's giving birth, it cuts to 
Your dad's fighting in the street. They are. You know, it's not in the street. They're in a pub. They're in oh, the, pub the backyard. backyard. Yeah. Well, they used to do betting that way years ago, didn't they? Yeah. So the tough men had come out, show what they could do. Anything was allowed. You know, and they were fighting on cobblestones. Yeah. They weren't on the canvas of the ring. When they were hitting the deck, there was no cushion between their ass or their head. Wow. Yeah, so it, you got that flavour of it really got going. The sweat was coming off you and watching it. <laughs> but and when he came home after the fight, your mum was lying in bed with you. <laughs> He gets off, yeah. He runs away because he's being accused of manslaughter that he's done someone in in the ring. So he gets off to America and she doesn't see her father no more, but he sends letters to her. And the way you keep hold of that, if that's all you had to your dad, yeah, you believe every word in it. And he's telling her that he owns this hotel. So, cut to when she's in the nick. Social services steal a child. Oh, I know. So she's not having it. Not having that. No, she's got to break out and rescue a kid. And she does. She does break out. And that scene, you know, in the prison, yeah. it's such a funny scene, isn't it? That chase scene. And it's really, really long. You know, it's a massive, great big banana shot you know i'm picked up like me and angela two little ants in the distance yeah and i went into training to do that mo movie i was doing fatigues and i was trained by kirby's um featherweight champion world champion boxer paul hodgkinson oh I. he trained me yeah and he's one of these lads he, Typical Kirby lad, they don't speak loads. <laughs> Shy. <clears throat> and he says, hey, how long have you got to keep boxing for in the shot? I said, three minutes at least. He said, okay, he said, I'm going to train you to keep your arms up in the air for six minutes. And that was one of the, the techniques yeah. of endurance. He stretched me endurance. So when I got onto the set to film these boxing scenes, it didn't feel as quite as much of a toll yeah. you know, on the energy. And the difference in Blonde Fist to there was a film come out near that time called The Big Man with Liam Neeson in it. And that was a boxing movie, a bare knuckle fighter. But they had two weeks to do all the boxing scenes. Yeah. I had two days. So all of those fight shots mm -hmm. were done only over two days. Yeah, so it was good. Oh, God. Because we were small budget, and that's one of the, the things that happens if you've got a small budget. It puts the fuel behind you in that way. You know, everything comes down to its most important component. Yeah. And then, um, so doing the fight scenes, you know the first girl I fight who's got the pigtails yeah. and like that? Look, she's a real boxer. Is she? The two girls I'm boxing are real boxers because there was no other actresses who could box. <laughs> so I was the first actress to box. So because of that, they didn't understand the way I understood what the camera needed. Yeah. Because, you know, the girls, you know, proper boxers. And then... Um, so when you, when you go in, when you're re rehearsing or you're shooting a scene, you don't make physical contact. Because if you make physical contact, it's over. You hear it, you can't do the job, you can't keep filming. So it's all choreographed. Every little step of it is exact. So one of them could have really knocked you out, couldn't they? They could have done. Yeah. But she walked onto my fist. <laughs> She walked on what? She walked onto my fist. I knocked her out for real. Right, yeah? Because she didn't realise as much as I did that you, it's non-contact, yeah? Yeah. And so I knocked her out. So that's a real knockout punch that I give her. That's really happened. Oh, dear. And the pigtails like that. 
flat like seagulls. And <clears throat> so the other girl, whose name I forget now, I should check that out on the, uh, the credits. The other girl who I'm boxing with, and she was so good looking. She looked like a blonde bull. Really good looking. She was dead quiet, you know, very dignified. And she gave me a good run for my money. And if you look at some of the scenes, some of the actual steps that I'm doing, yeah. you know, I look like old mother, old mother Riley on a bad bottle of Guinness. Cause <laughs> it's because you just shrank your dress up and climb in the ring. And just get stuck in. And you won the fight. Well, because of that training that she's had, the father has trained that character, his daughter, yeah. how to box. Because she says this, this, he thinks it's a boy, doesn't he? Yeah. When the mother gives birth on the budgie mills, he thinks it's a little lad and he's going to train that lad to become a world, you know, yeah. boxing champion. But it's a little girl, so he doesn't think there's a chance. And that scene you're talking about, you know, when in New York, yeah. where it's, she's on the stairs and it's a classic New York scene. This is the part with, which we're in New York. Yeah. And um, great scene, you sit, get out there on a bit of, you know, that brown stone with the, the, the staircase running yeah. along outside. And I go into a dream sequence and I'm thinking about when I was a child and it's a beautiful scene because it cuts to shots of us supposed to be me as a kid yeah and it's sacred heart a uh, junior school infant school in kirby and so i'm looking back at my own past yeah and there's someone playing our headmaster mr mullen who was a brilliant headmaster he was really special and that scene is depicting that so that's it's really led me into it Quite easy. You know the nightclub you went to, wasn't that called Sacred Horse as well? Called what? Sacred Horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that club's still going. They have a bingo on there every Is Wednesday. It? We'll have to go, Mark. It's really good. Yeah. £20 a line and £40 pound a house. Not bad, is it? Eh? Pay for the ale. It's disgusting. <laughs> oh, I don't know about the That was brilliant. Go on. Well, the dole scene, the girl who's working in the dole office, yeah, she's a bitch because she's stolen my Tony. Right. So everything I'm saying to her, you think I'm talking about me dole claim? Yeah. The real claim I'm talking about, he's my man and leave him alone. And she goes all snooty, you know, she's posh. Yeah. And then... Um, so she storms off and I go outside and I've got me little, me little lad, Tony, he's in the buggy and we're waiting for her to come out the door. Don't you attack her when yeah. she comes out? So when she comes out the door, you just see my hand appear out of nowhere and go, hmm, and launch her. And the next thing, I just walk towards her with a threatening gob and it cuts to her screaming and the baby with his hands over the tears like that. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know what? That's so that was watch that. You know, watch that again. Mom. Have a so fight funny. with the woman who you're going to sign on with. Because she's the real claim. Yeah. She's talking about on her, her boyfriend. Yeah. The father of a child. She's. But he came and stayed with you one night, didn't he? And yeah. was getting off the next morning. Well, the funny thing about that, right, we're, we're working through the night. You're doing 18 hour days. You don't sleep when you're making a film. It's like doing a marathon. It's the equivalent of doing a marathon. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got, learn the lines. This is, come, come back, do the job, put everything you've got into it, go back home, go to sleep, and learn the lines. <laughs> So it's constantly... It was really difficult, real focus and a challenge. And when our Frank, you know, he was directing me. Yeah. And to have my brother direct me like that, there's really some touching scenes. And you know that scene in, in St. Chad's Church? 
and she's crying. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, she's thinking about that, isn't she? Because she's crying over Tony. Yeah. And all the rain starts coming down. And it's a corny, corny shot, but it works. Because the rain covers my tears and you can't tell that I'm crying no more. Yeah. And the other thing about I love about Blonde Fist, I wear all the uh, sovereigns because it's a North End Catholic working class custom. It was a Liverpool thing, that wasn't it? Yeah, old sovereigns. So that they're all the things that you know I've got on. Yeah. And then, um, so when we go go to America, and we f find the father. Yeah. We get we end up at this big posh hotel, and. There's the red carpet, but the red carpet's not out for me. No, the red carpet's out for this real elite snob, a New World Order type. Gets out the car. I'm walking down the red carpet with the baby in the buggy. <laughs> and she's giving me daggers. Do you remember that bit? That was, that was amazing. And the other thing about... Blomfist as well. It's historical. It's a historical film of New York because the Twin Towers are in the shot. Yeah. 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 And it's the lower end of the... You see them in, in the distance as you're going over the, the Brooklyn Bridge. But we actually do a scene where the Twin Towers are at... One of the Twin Towers is at the end of the, the street. Yeah. And you see all the people in the, the office. You know, you can... You can pick up on that. I love the ends as well, where you're coming home with your dad and you can see the live buildings. Well, you know that the end of Blonde Fist was shot first two years before the rest really? of it. Really? Yeah. Because Frank was trying to raise the money yeah. for Blonde Fist and it was quite difficult because you, they didn't want to see women boxing. Mm. at that point in time but anyway that's another story so it, it was quite hard to get the money and uh, he got enough money and the QE2 was coming to Liverpool so it's made to look that I'm on the QE2 wow <laughs> <laughs> it's a real clever bit of we've got a little bit of money right now and this is just turning up. We've got the lights, we've got the music. Let's do it right here. So he went down to um, Ainsdale Beach and he mocked up a little bit more of the sand hills. And you see my, let me know the little girl. Um, it was, what's her name? Isn't it? Anyway, that'll come to me in a minute, but. But anyway, he's mocked up this more sand hills and the grass is swaying. And I'm running by the sand hills and the next thing I'm looking out at the river and this great big ship passes the ship, slowly comes into the shop. It's really big, it's massive. And all of the, the, the quay, all of the docks are lined with people. Scousers have wow. turned up to see the QE2. So we used it to make it look like they come out for me. <laughs> no, but it's, it's just amazing, isn't it? But, so, the, the thing about that, Peter Apostle Tweet, rest in peace. I know Peter. Brilliant actor. How do you know Peter Mark? I don't know him personally. <laughs> do you know I'm talking about, though, don't you, the actor? Yeah, Peter I know him because I've seen him on the telly. Well, right, he was at the Everyman years ago, and... I always, I went to the Everyman and I loved watching all the plays going on there and that's when uh, Julie Walters was there, yeah. <coughs> Peter Apostle Street was there, uh, Bill Nye, all that lot, they were all there and I used to go watching them on stage and I was amazed, he, he was amazing to watch, he was very physical and he put so much energy into the Do part. you know what he was good in? The way he done that monologue and brassed off. Yeah, and um, all actors loved him, and he'd just been discovered by Hollywood, this is afterwards, but we got him for Blonde Fist, yeah. because as the QE2 comes in, we're actually in a little raft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've, we've hired 
that little speed boot and it's piece of parcel tweet who's playing my father but it took two years to get the rest of the money for the, the film yeah. and Pete Postletweet wasn't available. Oh, so that's who it is in that, that, that scene. Yeah. So he's mm. really in Pete Postletweet. And where I hold the, the big belt up and I have is the winner. Big like welt weight belt, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Right. Nice talking to you, Margie. And you, Margie. Enjoy your coffee and your cake. Oh, please, can we have it all over again? Thank you.